and welcome everybody welcome everybody to another wednesday it's the last wednesday of the month and this is the time that we come together 8 a.m on a um wednesday uk time to chew the fat to talk and to be introduced to um different elements different aspects of modern mindset um, and when we say different aspects of modern mindset, it really covers three things. It could be about how we evolve into and becoming digitally transforming leaders, practitioners, uh, humans. It is about humanity and community. And of course, it is more and more about what we call regeneration, which is about ethical um, practices and environmental awareness and action. So we look at and we gather the insights and the statistics and the research and the discoveries from all over the world to bring you the simple, actionable elements that you need to know about that you can bring into your practice. We do the work to help you accelerate and speed up your own um, modern minded leadership. And today, what I wanted to do was I wanted to talk about this concept of rest. And whilst you might think, what's that got to do with all of it? And I guess, you know, it's a very, very quick sort of mind shift to recognise how important this is to all of us. I'm sure that everybody either here live or listening on replay will have a story to tell, a conversation to remember that has spoken about burnout, that has spoken about fatigue that has spoken about so much to do where do we find the time so much about just absolute overwhelm when it comes to the world that we live in today so rest is really really important to us but what I want to do today is I want to really start breaking it down and breaking it down is um, really important for us to begin with when we normally rest so when we think about rest when we when we normally do actually enter into a restful moment, a restful period, what comes up for you? What, 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 when do we normally rest as humans, as workers, as leaders? When do we rest? Well, it's really interesting because um, I'd love you to pop it into the chat what comes up for you. What comes up for me and what comes up in most of the research is one of two things. It's we rest when we finish something or we rest at the end of something. That's when we normally rest, at the end of something, when we have completed or finished something. And that is where we need to unravel things when it comes to modern mindset. Alex Pang um, is one of the forerunners of the whole world of rest and looking at the science of rest. And what's really interesting um, here is the power in this, the, the absolute simple power in this um, quote is phenomenal. Rest is not this optional leftover activity. Rest and work are symbiotic. They are partners. They work together. We need them both, not one more than the other. We need them both. And what's beautiful here is Alex talks about the concept of a wave as a visualization for us. We cannot have the high without the low. And scientifically, what we're recognizing now through research is that the better we are at resting, the better we are at working. And when you put that into statistics, what that basically means is the better we are at resting, the more time we rest appropriately, the better we are at working, the higher our productivity. So rest equals increased productivity. And rest, therefore, in a weird kind of a way, means that we can do more with less. I leave that at the beginning of today's session with a question mark, and hopefully at the end of today's session, it will be a statement that we can all kind of gather around um, and, and unite on. But to begin today's session, the question I have for us all is, can we do more 
with less if what the research and the scientists are telling us is true. I think it's really important for us also to recognize the world that we live in today. We are living in a digital, digitally enabled age. Um, there is so much data around us. There is so much attention grabbing um, us, grabbing our focus, vying for um, our time. And whilst we might often talk about time poverty, and you all know that that is something that I talk about a lot these days, what is interesting here is Sandra um, Dalton-Smith has now started talking about the rest deficit because we do not understand rest in the workplace. We do not understand rest for ourselves. Um, very, very interesting, especially in the world that we live in today. So just bringing that into mind as we start to unpick this concept of rest. So for me, I think it's all to do with how we approach rest. And there are two things that I want to share with you today. There is so much behind this concept of rest for us all to engage in and explore and experiment with. I only want to focus on two things today, um, two things that will help us to approach rest. And the first one is when we think about rest, if we are to approach it from this place, a place of restoration, we can start to change the paradigm. We can start to shift our beliefs, our habits, our mindset when it comes to rest. Because if rest is what we started off talking about, something that we more often than not do at the end of something when something is complete and we need to shift our mindset, how do we do that? Approach number one, is to think of it not as an end game, but to think of it as restoration. And when you think about restoration, what are some of the words that come up for you? This is the root of where rest comes from, to restore, to recharge, to reset, to replenish, to renew. And I am sure that we could go on and on and on and come up with more words, but these five words are super, super, super important to restore, to renew, to recharge, to reset, and to replenish. Not one or the other, every single one of them. And therefore, to rest only on completion or at the end is not enough. Not for us to achieve renewal, to be recharged, to be able to reset and create, to replenish, or indeed to restore. The next thing that I wanted to share with everybody, which is where the bulk of today's session is really going to be centered is looking at the different types of rest. So if we can start first and foremost with an approach of shifting from rest as an end game to rest as something that is about rest restoration and those five words I've just mentioned, then the next thing to be thinking about is the different types of rest. And this is the other approach to actually start breaking rest down into its different faces. And there are seven types, seven faces of rest. We have physical rest, mental rest, creative rest, sensory rest, social, emotional, and spiritual. And the first thing I will say is, unlike maybe a psychometric or a profiling test, I am not here to ask you which one are you most strong in, which one is your dominant, because we need all of these in equal measure. We need all of these in equal measure. And those of you that are familiar with the Dylan Way, are familiar with modern mindset, ask you a question. Isn't this spookily close to the energy? Spookily close to energy. Back to restoration. So the relationship between rest and energy is very, very, very close. So what I want to do is just take us very, very quickly at a high level through each one of these seven types of rest. And as we're going through it, it would be absolutely fantastic for you to kind of start to think about on this wheel of rest where you are balanced, 
where you are perhaps in a place that you need to bring a little bit more balance in. So I'm going to start with mental rest. And to start with mental rest, I, I apologize here. There's a little bit of a health warning for us all. I do need to go into a little bit of academic. I do need to go into a little bit of science. When we're talking about mental rest, it is really important for us to understand something. And it's to understand our brain based on two different elements. And the first element, which is where rest comes into it, is the default mode network or the D. M N. Your default mode network is the element of mental rest that we want to feed, that we want to give time to. The other element is what we call executive thinking, the executive thought mental network, the executive mode network. And of course, that's when we are on the ball, we're making decisions. You know, that is when we are really, really, really thinking um, in the moment. The executive brain, the executive side of the brain cannot be always on. That needs to be restored. And it gets restored by us spending time and giving time to feed the DMN. And if you think about the DMN, what you see here is um, some lovely explainers for it. The DMN, the default mode network, is the element of our brain, the area of our brain that is when we are not focused on the outside world, but we are focused on the internal world of who we are. Things like daydreaming, things like visualization, things like just a, a wandering mind and being okay with it. It's super important. So it's more about when we are being introspective rather than when we are engaging with the external world, which is more to do with the executive brain element. So my top tip for everybody here, my hot tip for everybody here is twofold. Number one, take tiny little regular breaks away from your executive brain functioning. And that can be, as an example, breathing just for two minutes. Just taking time out to focus on breathing in and out for two minutes. And it might sound like nothing, but two minutes of brief, focused breathing with our eyes closed is actually quite a long time. But what that will do is it will allow us to engage in that default mode network. And that is feeding the right side of our brain in order for us to be better when we need to go back into executive thinking and executive decision making. Just try it. I guarantee to you, it will increase your productivity, your ability to think more clearly when you need to make decisions in that more executive external kind of um, brain mode. So mental rest is incredibly important to us. I guess the easiest one for us all to get our head around is physical rest, isn't it? Because when you think about physical rest, it's kind of easy to recognize it in two areas. You have the passive rest, which is take a nap. And it's very interesting because I used to work on the boats when I was a student. And um, so we used to work shifts. So I got very, very used to this concept of just sleep for 20 minutes and uh, wake up and off you go again. And nap time, you know, there's a lot of science behind nap time during the day that allows us to physically actually replenish and restore. And of course, then there is bedtime when we go to sleep at night. And thinking about sleep hygiene as part of physical rest is very very, very important. No tech in the bed, as I say. And then the other S aspect of physical rest, of course, is active. So you can be walking, you can dance, you can run. I've even put rock climbing in there. Who cares? Whatever it is, whatever spins your wheels, whatever shakes your mojo, it's something to get your physical body moving. And it doesn't have to be excessive at all. It can be walking up and down stairs, as simple as that a few times a day. And I don't know how many of you have got a little bit addicted to those um, technology things that we put on our on our wrists, like a Fitbit or something like that. And you're counting how many steps you have um, that you have completed in a day. That is good as long as you don't become completely obsessed with it. But thinking about active and passive physical rest is super, super important. The next one, which is really interesting, is emotional rest. And this one's tough because, you know, oh, I can see a little smile on somebody's face. Um, this one's really interesting 
because a lot of us, a lot of us can actually have a bit of an internal guilt complex when it comes to giving ourselves time to feed emotional rest. And, and anybody that is um, connected in with PQ, positive intelligence, um, you will know what I mean when, I, when I've got the little brackets there, any pleasers in the room, please. So um, what is emotional rest all about? How much time do we give into support, care, compassion for other humans? And so much literature now around leading, leading humans, being an effective leader is about, you know, support, is about um, emotional well-being, is about spending time with people and social capital. Great, fantastic, but not at the expense of your own emotional rest. If you're spending all of your time in this world of care, compassion and support for others, and feeding what might be a limiting belief, which I also do hold, which is the pleaser. How do you feed your emotion? Because you're giving it all away, which means that you are in emotional rest deficit. There has to be something about you being okay to say no, you being okay to spend time alone, you being okay to do things that bring you joy and fulfillment. One of the most tough elements of emotional rest is showing up and being present with your authentic self. And it's not just being your authentic self, but it's displaying courage to be your authentic self. So that when somebody, as you can see here, asks you, how are you today? You don't habitually go to, oh, fine, thanks, when actually you know you're not. You know you're not. Hot tip, do one thing that brings you joy or fulfillment every single day for you, for you, indulge in you. And one thing I do most mornings, which is really laying it on the table and sharing it here to the world of everybody is I dance to Queens. I want to break free in the kitchen um, when I'm either on my first or second coffee. And I love it. And do you know what? It works. It works for me. It's my moment and nobody is around me. And it's my little indulgence. And boy, does it feed my emotion. What feeds your emotion? If you're in emotional rest deficit. The next one is creative rest and creative rest, similar to emotional rest, but there is a subtle implicit difference. And what this is all about is this is the, the rest that feeds our ability to problem solve to lean into difference, to walk towards uncertainty, to think about the future and visualize it, to brainstorm lots and lots of ideas. So with creative rest deficit, we find it hard to engage in those things like change, transformation, problem solving and brainstorming. And a lot of people around us might be displaying this and we might in, incorrectly label it as change resistance. Maybe it's just creative rest deficit. So how do we help ourselves and others and feed and restore creative rest? We do it by bringing what is called a sense of awe or wonder. And the most effective way of doing that, which is my hot tip here, is go outside and not go outside for a walk, but just go outside and connect with nature. Look at a tree and think. It's winter, it may look dead, but how much amazing magic is happening underneath the ground. Look at the beauty of what is outside to reconnect and reawaken creative um, rest. There is another thing that we can do as well. And by the way, going out to nature, it can be a park, you know, if you're living in an urban area. It doesn't have to be in the middle of a woodland area or a fields. 
The other thing that is um, important, and this is something that I do quite regularly, I don't know that any of you that um, might know me, I always have um, pictures by me, and they're always pictures by my brother who is an artist, and, um, and I change them, I change the environment. And I want green around me at the moment. I want to really, really kind of feed the nature side of who I am because we're going into this winter months of everything being below ground and all we can see above ground is pretty much stark and grey. So these are the pictures that I have. And every so often I will change these pictures and things around me. What am I talking about? I'm talking about your work environment. I'm talking about your desk. I'm talking about the room within which you work on a regular basis because you spend so many hours there. Can you bring a sense of creativity, your favorite art, you know, or something that you just love, a poetry book that you love? Just having that poetry book in your work environment can do an immeasurable, an immeasurable positive effect on feeding and restoring your creative rest. Simple. Go outside or add and add stuff to your um, area of environment, your area of work. Sensory rest. What do we mean by sensory rest? Gosh, what can I say? Tech, 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 tech. In a world that is completely and utterly fragmented because of so many technologies around us, bright, bright, bright screens, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling onward. Um, that's pretty tough. Sensory rest is something incredibly important for us in the modern world, because what happens with a sensory rest deficit is overwhelm. Sensory rest deficit can really add to overwhelm in our life. And that is not good because overwhelm leads to worry, anxiety, fight or flight. We freeze. We freeze. We have an inability to make a decision in work. We have an inability to move forward. We get stuck. Does that sound familiar to you personally or with people around you? So hot tip here is for sensory rest, close your eyes for short intervals during the day. If you need your computer, if you need your mobile phone, close your eyes. That's all you need to do for short intervals regularly during the day. Ideally, what you do is you simplify the amount of the number of devices and the amount of time on devices that you use. For many of us, that's a little bit more difficult. So closing our eyes for short intervals is something that I know we can all we can all do. And then the penultimate one is social rest. And social rest is um, very, very closely linked to emotional rest again, in particular when it comes to deficit. But social rest is where we take stock of the people that we spend most of our time with. And we think about them from an energetic perspective as people that de-energize us or people that re-energize us. And social rest is about making time to be with people that re-energize us, that give us positivity. And spending time with positive energizers whenever we can is incredibly important. And it doesn't have to be physical. It can be over the phone, it can be over Zoom or Teams. It doesn't matter. But it's, you know, the, the key thing here is to restore social rest, be with positive, energizing human beings. How much time do you spend with positive, energizing human beings on a daily basis? Not a weekly basis, not sporadic, but regular. And the final type of rest is spiritual rest. And spiritual rest is something that I love because what this is, is, is this sense of, look at these beautiful words here, belonging. Think about teamwork. Yeah. Love, acceptance, purpose. Um, purpose gives us that North Star when we're thinking about change and transformation. Love and acceptance gives us humanity and community. Belonging gives us teamwork and collaboration. All of the stuff that actually uniquely define us as humans against any other creature here on Earth. Spiritual rest deficit is really big at the moment, I think. 
I experience it in my mentoring sessions so often with leaders because it's something that they haven't connected into or it's just something that they haven't thought of, thought of as part of work and leadership. And yet spirituality away from religion is incredibly important. And there are two elements to it. There is the internal element and the external element. The internal element is where we can think about being grateful. That's positive uh, intelligence. We can spend time in meditation. That's so incredibly important because that connects in with who we are. You know, who am I? I am me. Where am I? I am here. And the external elements of spiritual rest are about community work and sustainable environmental activities in our daily routine. So internally feeding spiritual rest and externally feeding um, spiritual rest. And again, not one or the other, but both. So that is a whistle stop tour of the seven types of rest. Um, rest as a theme for today, as I mentioned at the start, is one tiny element, is one of the subjects, one of the content areas that we bring to you as leaders, to you as modern-minded practitioners in the workplace uh, in order for you to go forth and multiply and support modernity in your systems. And if you would like to know more about that from a leadership perspective, then just to let you know, we have group programs. We also have mentoring programs where we work with smaller uh, groups of leaders, uh, but you know, focusing uh, the priority on one-to-one -one and also bespoke just working with an individual one-to-one, -one, either on a single session or up to um, programs. There is also um, our, um, our passion project at the moment, which is coming to a close. So in January, Tea with Mel will integrate into all of our other um, programs, all of our other leadership work. And Tea Mastery is all about how we master time, energy and attention. I've left that in here for this particular session, even though I'm coming to the end of this particular passion project, because it's so closely linked to today's content. It's so closely linked to rest time, energy and attention. And also really excited to share with you coming up in January 2024 is our new Strong and Seen programme for um, mentors and coaches out in the um, business world that need themselves to become digitally enabled in order for them to better serve their own uh, business and their customers. So um, supporting them through mindset shift, with digital skills training, and also with a step-by-step -step process to follow to become digitally enabled themselves as business stroke executive mentors and coaches. So quite excited about that. Please do, as always, connect with me. And I don't mind or care how you connect with me because I'm there. And I promise you I will answer. And I promise you it's not going to be a robot. It's going to be me. There's no AI virtual assistants in my world. So please do uh, connect with me in any way that, uh, you know, that aligns with your own um, preferences for um, connection. So bringing today to a close, we've got a few more moments left. Um, let's go back to Alex Pang, because Alex Pang really is the forerunner of the whole science and literature around rest, breaking it down and helping us to understand it. Um, it is important for us really to see and think about rest, not as a negative space that we fill in when we've done our work, but actually seeing it as the sister or the brother too work, the sibling, they work together, or the wave, as I mentioned earlier on. So think about those seven types of rest, think about where you do already restore and feed rest to replenish. Think about those areas in these seven types that we've gone through today where perhaps you don't, and what you might be able to do using that hot tip that I gave you for each one. I guess the other thing that I wanted to share today as well is what if you really want to just take a step back completely on all of this? Where do you start? And um, I think for me, 
there are four very important small steps. The first one is, ah, beyond anything else. And this was a game changer for me, I have to tell you in my own personal experience. Stop thinking of rest as an end game. Really, really important. Start to think about the difference between active and passive rest. Now, we saw that in physical rest type two. But what about active and passive rest when it comes to just laying in front of a TV and watching a bit of Netflix versus, I don't know, sitting down and listening to music, sitting down and doing a crossword puzzle, sitting down and doing some knitting or crocheting or painting a picture. Active rest is super, super powerful in comparison to passive rest. And try and experiment with some of those seven types that we've seen. And most importantly, without question, try and bring rest and work back together. We've, we've totally disconnected these two things in our corporate world, totally disconnected them. Try in any way, shape or form to bring rest and work back together for you in order for you then to help bring those two things back together for others around us. So are we in a place where that question at the start, can we do more with less, has suddenly turned into a statement, you can do more with less. So my challenge for everybody is when will you rest today? Because it's not about when you finish something. And more importantly, how will you rest today, given now you have a choice of seven types of rest to choose from? There's always banana skins in the world of Mel Ross, isn't there? And um, the banana skins here are really interesting. The first one is you can't be bothered because if you are in a place of fatigue, it is very easy for you to say, oh, you know what? I won't go for that walk. What I'll do is I'll open a bottle of wine and have a glass of wine. Can't be bothered. That's a state of mind. It's a trigger. You have a choice to um, really wake yourself out of it. The next one is tomorrow never comes. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. Because Mel, you don't understand. I've got so much that I need to get done today. Hmm, really? And the final one is, and I, and, and, and I put this in there because this is arguably the one that I fall uh, a, a cropper with so often is forgetting. It is so easy at the beginning of the journey of bringing rest together with work again so that they are one and united and not separate to forget about rest and then when you're in your retrospective you go oh no i forgot to and um and sadly that's where i um come a cropper as i mentioned so there we go the world of rest i will actually come off uh, off off share screen and see where everybody's at in terms of reflections and in terms of stories or uh, questions, I'd love it if there were questions. What I do want to do, though, is just share with you something from the UK government. If you go onto the UK government site, the hmrc.gov.uk uh, site, what you will see is you will see that there are some pages dedicated to rest at work there. And um, what they talk to is they talk to um, knowledge workers and or workers over the age of 18 being entitled to, not compulsory, not mandatory, but entitled to three types of rest. Rest breaks at work, a minimum of 20 minutes every six hours, daily rest and weekly rest. So if you are responsible for other human beings and responsible for role modeling, effective working um, in your environment, thinking about the three types of rest. How often do you pull a weekender? How often do you work beyond eight hours into the night? How often do you go beyond six hours without taking a minimum of 20 minutes break? And by the way, the 20 minutes break is rest break, restoration break, not Oh, 20 minutes, I'll put the washing on, I'll do this, I'll walk the dog, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. Oh, two minutes, got to get back to work. <laughs> Note to self. So there we go, a whistle-stop tour into the world of rest. That is not separate to work. It is the yin and the yang 
of a united whole. So I'm going to stop the share button and just um, come into the round. I will stop the record button. So just bear with me one second. Stop recording.